So I've played the careers of a lot of players. Mishkov, Connor Bedard, Connor McDavid, and now it's time to play the career of Macklin Salbrini. However, this one's going to be a bit different. I'm not just playing the career of Macklin Salbrini. I'm going to give him the greatest career of all time. So normally I would allow the CPU to control the first three years of Macklin Salbrini's career. That's not happening today. We are going to try to win Macklin Salbrini, 10 Stanley Cups, 15 Stanley Cups, whatever the record for Stanley Cups is, that's the goal today. We're going to win Macklin Salbrini that many Stanley Cups. We're going to turn him into the the greatest player of all time. Now, obviously, turning Macklin Salbrini into the greatest player of all time with this San Jose Sharks team right here, it's going to be a bit difficult. So, for the first couple years, we are going to be rebuilding. Now, some things won't be changing by playing the career of Macklin Salbrini. I am going to be able to jump into some of these games, but obviously, we have conditions on what games I can jump into. I'm only going to be allowed to jump into one game per round, and it has to be the third period. If we're trailing by three goals, I can play the entire third period. If I'm trailing by two goals, I only can play half the period, and if I'm trailing by one goal or it's a tie game, I can play the final five minutes in overtime. So if we're going to turn Macklin Salbrini into the greatest player of all time and give him the greatest career possible, we got to start making moves immediately. Logan Couture, I think I'm going to trade you over to the Chicago Blackhawks. I think they're going to be one of the few teams that actually can handle your cap hit. The Toronto Maple Leafs certainly can't, but maybe the Montreal Canadiens can. So you're either going to Chicago or Montreal, no in between. So this is what the first move is going to be. We're going to be ditching the Logan Couture contract. We're going to have to trade a prospect in the deal as well. Frank Nazario is going to come to the team. I think you have the potential to be an elite sniper for us. So I'm going to bring you to the team. Athens, you, you're coming to the team just so we can make the contracts work. We're going to have to give up some draft capital. Now, I don't want to give up a ton of draft picks here, but you know what? We're going to have to give up a few. We really don't have that many valuable draft picks. San Jose is such a terrible team, yet they barely have any draft picks. I don't know how that makes sense. What have y'all been doing the past couple years? I'll throw a seventh rounder and fourth rounder into this deal. They're saying no to that. What else do you actually want? Because I'm not trading this second round pick. I mean, we could trade the second round pick, but you got to give me assets back. Like, if I give you that second round pick, I want that second round pick from the Dallas Stars and this fourth round pick from the Chicago Blackhawks, then I think it's a fair deal. They're saying no to that. How about you just give me Dallas a second rounder? All right, so we're exchanging second rounders, although ours is going to be a lot more valuable. At least we're getting one back. So right now, the San Jose Sharks have way too many playmakers. It's actually ridiculous. And what do we need? Snipers and power forwards. And the Columbus Blue Jackets just happen to have both of them. So we're going to pick both of them up here. Granlin and Ty Delandria are going to be shipped over. Marchenko, welcome to the team. Vronkov, welcome to the team. We're still tanking in year number one. Don't get it twisted. All right, so this is what we're going to be rocking for year number one. Now, Grant we're not trying to win games, but we're not trying to lose games. So Brini, Frank, Nazar, Tau Foley, Frankoff, William, Eklund, Marchenko, that's the top six. This team is going to be very bad this season. We are going to be one of the worst, no question about it. However, we're building for the future here. Ascroft, you're going to be the starting goaltender. Now, you might be wondering, where is Will Smith? Well, basically, I was looking at this top six right here, and Will Smith doesn't really fit here because he's another playmaker, and I want Frank Nazar alongside Sal Brini since he is a sniper. So Will Smith would end up playing bottom six minutes, and at that point, I I think I'd rather have him in the AHL playing top line minutes than in the NHL playing bottom six minutes. I think that's just way better for his development. With all that being said, it's time to get ready for year number one here. It's time for the San Jose Sharks to have their competitive tank. We're not trying to lose games. We're not necessarily trying to win games though. So let's go ahead, be five on five focus this season, get the defensive awareness up, get the offensive awareness up, and let's build a super team and allow Macklin Celebrini to win 15 Stanley Cups. In order to win 15 Stanley Cups, there is one thing you guys need to do. It's subscribe to the channel. Are you a part of the almost six 60% of people that aren't subbed to the channel, that's absolutely ridiculous. You're watching the video, you clearly enjoy the content, so make sure you subscribe. Now, it's no surprise, we're one of the worst teams in the entire league, but this bad is a bit of a surprise. 17, 40, and 7, this team can't do anything right. We don't score goals, and we allow a lot of goals. Yeah, this team sucks. I mean, granted, that's not really much of a surprise. William Eklund, 54 points so far. Marchenko's got 53, Veronka, 46, so that's actually a pretty good second line. Everyone else is terrible, though. I mean, Frank Nazar, at least you have 17 goals so far. You're up to an 80 overall. Celbrini, what are you up to? You're an 87 overall. Never mind, you're an 83 overall. I thought it was an 87, but that's Tower Toffoli. Yeah, this team is just very bad. I mean, Ascroft, what are you up to? You're an 82 overall. Not expecting too much from you here. You probably wouldn't have been better off in the HL. Maybe I should have left you there. But you know what? We're going to do a bit of selling here. But there's actually not really that much selling we can actually do because we're already basically at the salary cap floor. So yeah, we can't really do too much here. Now, I feel like this is the perfect time to mention the greatest fleece in NHL history done by the same. St. Louis Blues picking up Phil Broberg. The Edmonton Oilers don't know what they're missing here. He's been absolutely elite so far this season. Now I want to bring him on to the San Jose Sharks. I want him to help this team. Juan Ruda and two seventh round picks are going to be sent over to St. Louis. Broberg, welcome to the team. You're going to play some big pairing minutes here. But yeah, that's really all we can do. We have nobody of value on this team that doesn't have a no trade clause. So I think we're all well aware of what's going to happen here. We're going to drop from one to three. I think we all see it coming. Like this team's somehow going to drop to the third overall pick. And we're going to miss out on a franchise 
franchise potential player. I see it all happening now. William Ekman, Marchenko, Tao Toffoli, Mac and Sobrini, you guys were the top players for us this season. And that's saying something because this entire team is just terrible. We can't even look at Ashcroft's numbers. I don't know why that is, but you know what? We're just going to ignore it. This team was so incredibly bad. It was ridiculous, but we kind of expected that. The New York Rangers are Stanley Cup champions, taking down the Edmonton Oilers in a five-game series. Now, you better give me the first overall pick. Like, if I don't get the first overall pick after winning only 24 games, I'm going to be a bit annoyed, and we are dropping to the second overall pick. Okay, at least we're only dropping to second. Like, I can live with that. If we somehow dropped to third, I would have been a bit mad. Now, if there's a franchise potential player projected number one, I'll be a bit upset. So, it's not going to be a franchise potential player projected number one, but this guy is a power forward, and we really need a power forward on this team. So, I think we'll just draft Igor Kozlov, and then we're going to trade him for Moeller. I think that's just what we do here. Unless Moeller somehow drops to the second overall pick. Okay, it doesn't look like he is, but we have enough playmakers on this team. I'm going to draft this mediumly potential guy right here, and then we're going to flip him. We're going to send him over to Buffalo. We're going to get a deal done. Like, this deal is going to be very easy to get done. I honestly wouldn't be surprised if we could just go one for one here. I'm going to offer that over. They're saying no. They want like a seventh rounder. They're not going to want too much more. Like, here's a sixth round pick for 2026, and I think that'll be the difference. Are you really saying no? Like, these are two elite players. Like, what are we doing here? I'll give you the night. I'll give you the 97th overall pick as well. They're saying no to that. They want a six rounder. I'm perfectly fine with doing this. Having to give up the 97th overall in a future six honestly isn't the end of the world. We're getting the guy we want here. So just in case Ashcroft can't be our elite potential goaltender in the future, we're going to bring in Ivan Kovic, 63 overall. He's got medium elite potential. He might be the next guy up. You never know. So to finish out the draft here with the 94th overall pick and the 95th overall pick, we're getting two elite potential players. One of them is going to have low elite potential, but the other is going to be a medium elite potential goaltender. So considering everything that happened in this draft, it was pretty successful. So Voronkov, I want to keep you on this team, but we do have to save a little bit of money. So we're going to save 250k here. I'm going to give you a modified no trade clause in the final two years. 6.3 million for the next five. You're going to be a top six player for us. So I don't mind that deal. Zutterland, I'm going to be honest. I don't actually know where you fit on this team. So I think we're just going to qualify you as an RFA and then trade you away. Athens CU, you're going to walk. Cody CC, you're going to walk. Klim Costin, you can't walk. You're an elite bottom six player. I love having Klim Costin on the bottom six. So 1.6 million for the next two is going to keep him around. Luke Kunin, Sturm, Smith, all these guys are going to walk. Orlu, I'll qualify you as an RFA, but I think we'll probably just trade you away. I mean, I guess that depends on what you're looking for here. Do you want a two-way contract? Do you want $1 million for the next two? Qualifying you as an RFA. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of changes on this team. And then when it comes to our backup goaltender, Blackwood, you want $1.6 million. Vanacek, how much do you want? I'll sign whoever's cheaper. It looks like it's going to be Vanacek. We'll do $1.3 million for one year. All right, so let's focus on the future of this team. William Eklin, Mario Ferraro, Frank Nazaro. I want all of you guys staying on this team. William Eklin, though, you're not going to make it easy. We're probably not going to save too much money in this deal because we can't really give you a no trade clause or anything. But can we drop that down to like 8.6 million or something? Actually, we can do 8.5 million. 8.5 for the next five. That's a fair deal for you. Mario Ferraro, where are you going to be looking for? I can give you a no trade clause or something. And I think I will. So this is what we're going to do with Mario Ferraro. It's going to be 4.5 million for the next four years. He's getting a 20 team no trade for the next four. That should keep him on this team. And then Frank Nazar, I see you being a good top six player for us in the future. But you only want a one year deal. So we're going to have to hold off. If we were to do eight years, where are you looking for? Okay, this might be possible. So Frank Nazar, this is what we're going to look at. 4.8 million for the next eight years. A no movement clause in the final three. If we can get this deal done, it's going to be incredible for us. Another deal that's going to be amazing is this one with Phil Broberg. We're going to do 2.7 million for the next four years. That's incredible for the role he's going to be playing. You know what? While we're at it, let's keep Jake Wallman on the team. We'll do 3.6 million for the next two. All right, so we have so much cap space. It's ridiculous. $30 million. And we have no money to spend on anyone. So perfect. So I'm going to give you 2.7 for the next couple of years. I'll even give you a modified no trade. But there's not a single good player that's actually interested in coming to this team. And honestly, I don't blame them. We were so incredibly bad last season. Why would anyone want to play here? Daniel Sprong, I guess we can bring to the team here. Honestly, I don't care if you join the team or not. Here's $3 million for the next three years. That's more than what you're asking for. But you know what? We got to reach the salary cap floor. And you know what? Because we have to reach the salary cap floor in Sutherland, I guess I am going to bring you back to the team. I'll do a three by three with you as well. Like we need somebody to play some minutes on this team. Bordeloo, I'll actually bring you back to the team as well. As I said, we got to reach the salary cap floor. So why not? So Mario Ferraro, I tried to give you an extension. You rejected it. So now we're going to trade you away. Ferraro, Bordeloo, a fourth and Cardwell over to the Detroit Red Wings. We're bringing in Axel Sedin Pelica. This man always turns into a beast in the future. So let's just give some people one year deals here. Oli Mata, if I give you three and a half million dollars, you're going to be interested in joining this team. I just need you to help us reach the salary cap floor. I'm going to offer that over. He's accepting. Who else wants a one year deal? And then Dylan Sandberg, here's 3.8 million for one year. He'll help us reach the salary cap floor. Let's tank again this season. Well, it's not tanking, it's competitive losing. Now, this is actually a bit surprising, but we're not actually terrible offensively now. Celebrini, William Eklund, Frank Nazar on the top line, Marchand. 
Shevchenko, Will Smith, Voronkov on the second. Our third line is going to consist of Tyler Toffoli, Wenberg, and Moeller. This is not a bad top nine whatsoever. Our defense is atrocious though. Like this is an abysmal defense. We are not going to win with this defense. No question about it. With goaltending, we're not going to win with that. However, the forward core is looking better this season. That's a step in the right direction. Next season, we're going to focus big time on defense. But then again, it's only a matter of time before guys like Axel Sedin, Pelka, and Sam Dickinson are jumping into the lineup. And then once those guys jump into the lineup, we're not going to be looking back. 10-1-2 to start the season. How are we doing that? Like, that doesn't make any sense. We are not this good of a team. We should not have 10 wins right now. If anything, we should have 10 losses. This game confuses me. So you know what? We're not even going to question it fourth in the entire league fourth in the entire league with a 39 18 and 7 record the offense is amazing and the defense is spectacular our defense is spectacular how does that even work we have one of the worst defensive cores in the league and you're telling me our defense is elite here askroff you must have the greatest numbers imaginable william eklund's up to an 89 overall so an 86 frank nazar an 85 will smith an 88 askroff what are your numbers this season 32 wins three shots a 915 and 277 vanity check you've been a lead as well I got nothing to say. I don't know what to say about this team. We have 39 wins. We're borderline almost guaranteed the playoffs at this point, as long as we don't lose every game for the rest of the year. I don't want to make a trade because I don't think we're good. I'm going to be honest. I don't think we're a good team here, so I don't want to make a trade. We're not making any trades here. We are not a good team. You guys saw our defensive core at the beginning of the season. We are not a good team. I don't know what's going on. Like when I had the conversation with the coach at the beginning of the season, bro didn't even say, let's try to make the playoffs this season. He knew we were going to be a terrible team so we just said eh, whatever happens happens this season we're gonna let the team develop you are telling me this defensive core is one of the best in the entire league we have people in here with terrible line fits and somehow we're still doing okay jake wallman you got 25 points broberg you got 17 how is this happening as crawford you like a 90 overall or something no you're an 84 i don't know what to say it doesn't make sense so to finish out the season, the San Jose Sharks are going to be a top six team here, finishing six with a 49-24-9 record. I still haven't figured it out. The offense took a slight step back. The defense is still amazing here. How is this team good? William Eklund, 93 points. Celebrini, 79. Frank Nazar, you're picking up 30 goals this season. This team has exceeded expectations, but they've exceeded them by quite a bit. Like, I mean a ton. There's no reason we should be this good. Askarov, you got 40 wins so far, four shutouts. We actually made the playoffs in year number two here. We got the Vancouver Canucks to take on. If if we can win Celebrini a Stanley Cup in year number two here, that's going to be an incredible start to this career and making this man the greatest of all time. So if you asked me at the beginning of the season, I would have made the comment that we actually might be worse this season because our defense is so bad. But now our defense is absolutely elite. For a second, I thought we were going to sweep the Vancouver Canucks. Game number four is coming up here. That's going to be a big one. Can we take a 3-1 series lead? We shouldn't be taking a 3-1 series lead. We shouldn't have anyone on the brink of elimination. That just shouldn't happen with the San Jose Sharks team. And we definitely shouldn't be shutting a team out in game number five like i'm speechless here this makes absolutely no sense the fact the san jose sharks are this competitive we're just going to keep on rolling we've got the vegas golden knights coming up next we're winning game number one but we're going to drop game number two what's going to happen in game number three a best of five moving forward we're going to drop that one now if we're going to compete in the postseason we might as well win a stanley cup we're going to win game number four and we've tied this series up game five is going to be a huge one who's going to be winning this one we won in overtime are we really going to make it to the conference finals without having me jump into any of these games all right we got game six elimination coming up we actually might make it to the conference finals because i'm going to jump into this one like macklin celebrini i'm going to get you a stanley cup in year number two and you're picking up a massive goal in the first period in the second we're going to be exchanging goals here we got ourselves a close one unfortunately jack eichel is going to be picking up a massive goal here in the third period it's going to be a power play goal and it looks like vegas has now got a one goal lead but of course our man moeller is going to be responding just a couple minutes later he's picking up a massive goal and now we got a tie game so it looks like a former shark's going to be getting on the board here and that's going to be kevin lebank we've entered the final five minutes the boys are on the power play here it's time for me to even this game up and send us to overtime now this game actually will be tough because we don't necessarily have a ton of superstar players to rely on here so we're gonna have to play a bit risky tower to full you're gonna bring the puck into the zone the boys are on the power play here let's try to cook something up throwing it to Celebrini, but we couldn't complete the pass oh there we go we also made for a breakaway Celebrini, turn on the jets here go to the backhand why didn't you go to the backhand bro just chose not to go to the backhand okay he's letting us down 
So here we go. We're going to break this out of the zone. I'm going to throw it up to Tower Toffoli. He's got to step on the defense here. He's going to send it out in front. Eklund can't capitalize, though. That was a tough one. So we're down to the final 10 seconds. Frank Nazar just throws something on net here. It's going to be a loose puck. Selbrini's going to center it to Zutterland, and Zutterland can't get it between Aiden Hill's pads. That was a tough one. Bro had an elite opportunity there. He just couldn't capitalize. So Vegas has got the full pressure meter maxed out. We only have 30 seconds left and we have too many tired players on the ice. And unless something stupid happens, I don't see us winning this one. Vronkov's got the puck, but he's exhausted. He's going to send over to Perbix, who's exhausted. Perbix back to Vronkov. Just throws towards the net. Aiden Hill almost missed that one. We actually almost scored there. So in the final seconds of this game, Scott Lawton's going to bring the puck down. And yes, I actually said his name right. Scott Lawton bring the puck down. We're just running out of time time here the boys weren't ready to win yet like plain and simple this was not a good san jose sharks team i'm not surprised we're losing this game like the fact that we even made it to game seven of the second round surprises me but yeah there was no chance of us winning this game like even when i have to jump in and play the game i'm not jumping in with the greatest players of all time like you saw what our defense was you're telling me when i pass it back to the point i have to rely on perbix one of our top defensemen to make that big time shot or make that big time play not really the guy I want to rely on. Nothing against Perbix or anything, but I just don't want to be sending it back to Perbix. I'll send it back to Kale McCarr and I'll rely on him. I'll send it back to Zamula, I'll rely on him. But I don't really want to send it back to 82 overall Perbix. That's not really the play. So the Colorado Avalanche are going to go on to win the Stanley Cup. They're going to take down the Vegas Golden Knights in a five-game series. Well, they took Vegas down the conference finals. They beat Florida in the Stanley Cup final. Marchenko, 13 points here. Five goals, eight assists. Voronkov picking up eight goals. What an elite player. He's up to an 87 overall. 87 overall with medium top nine potential. Make it make sense. So, Brini, you're looking elite so far. The forward core is incredible here. We just got to focus on the defense. If we bring in an elite defensive core, yeah, we're going to be winning multiple Stanley Cups here. So, Brini's going to turn to the greatest player of all time we're gonna build a dynasty so it's not much of a surprise obviously in the draft we got to get a defenseman we're gonna begin schmidt medium top four defensive defenseman starting off as a 65 overall yeah we just need defensemen on this team i don't care if you're a 65 overall you might play for us next season now i was gonna draft a defenseman here but i saw this low lead potential player starting off as almost a 70 overall at a 69 hey that's actually not a bad pickup here in the fourth round so we got 34 million dollars in cap space and i don't want to bring any of these guys back like i actually don't alex wenberg where you look for 6.1 1 million but you want no trade clause i'm not doing that only matter don't want to bring you back vlasic don't want to bring you back i don't know how we're going to reach the salary cap floor next season but we're going to find a way to do it now right now celebrini's only looking for a four-year deal at 11 million dollars we're going to hold off a little bit because i do want to sign you to a long-term deal marchenko where are you going to be looking for can it be a long-term deal you only want two years so i guess we're going to hold off with you i know for a fact we have the money to re-sign you guys but i just don't want to be doing short-term deals clem cost will do a two-year deal at one million dollars you're a good bottom six piece for us we're actually going to be saving money there Barkley Goudreau will let you walk and yeah that's really it no one else needs to be signed I guess Ascroft needs to be signed and what does he want hopefully an eight-year deal only four years I'll still do it so we'll do 5.1 for the next four years and Ascroft's gonna be sticking around we really don't have to do too much now once again there's not really too many players that have organizational interests with us so I don't know who we're gonna bring to the team here we need somebody on a one-year deal that's gonna want a significant amount of money I don't know how we're gonna reach the salary cap floor we're gonna have to trade for some bad contracts or something so Quentin Musty you know what I think you could be a good player for us in the future however we're almost at a win now situation i mean it's not technically win now but we got to start competing a bit more so i'm going to trade you over to the chicago blackhawks and we're going to pick up kevin korchinski kevin korchinski will be one of the better defensemen on this team he's going to help us a lot here a fifth round pick will be enough to make the difference in this one now with that move complete i guess we could do a couple free agent signings for the bottom six we don't really need to do too much so evander kane here's five million dollars for one season you're going to help us reach the salary cap floor that's really the only reason we're doing this deal so there you go evander kane's joined the team so since we can't bring adrian Kempe to the team i guess we'll just move on to guys like boone jenner here's eight million dollars for one season that will certainly help us reach the salary cap floor then alex i follow i know you want a three-year deal but how about we do one year eight million dollars as well this is just the simplest way for us to reach the salary cap floor we're gonna do 6.3 with him and now we're there so i'm excited to see what happens here last season the sounds like sharks exceed expectations by so much it was actually ridiculous like there's no reason we should have been that good now moving into this season expectations are higher for a better reason kevin korchinski sam dick Dickinson, Broberg, Jake Wallman. That's an amazing top four. When it comes to goaltending, 85 overall Askarov. This team actually might be able to compete for a Stanley Cup this time. Last season, we were frauds heading into the postseason. Not anymore. We're legit this time. So we held off a little bit with Macklin Celebrini, so we are going to save some money. It's going to be $10.8 million for the next six seasons. We're going to save about a million dollars. And then Marchenko, let's see if we can do a six-year deal with you as well. It looks like we're going to be able to, but we're going to give you a no-movement clause. We're going to make sure you're staying on this team. So we're going to end up saving a million dollars with Marchenko 
it's going to be 5.7 for the next six seasons and no movement clause kicking in in year number two. Even on a six-year deal that keeps him on the team till he's 32 years old, he'll still be in his prime then. Now, why does this not surprise me? The San Jose Sharks look better this season, so we're going to be 13th in the entire league. The offense is taking a step back and the defense is taking a step back. How does that make any sense? Our defense last year was not good. Granted, we did have a handful of defensive defensemen. Maybe that was the big reason. But yeah, we have not been good this season. And it's been the top guys. William Eklund, Celebrini, Frank Nazar. You guys haven't stepped up this season. I need you to be better than this. Ask her off. Your number's not nearly as good as last season. I think we got to trade for a defensive defenseman. We got to bring somebody in here. We need an elite defensive defenseman. I don't know who that's going to be. Alex Vlasic, what's your overall? Because I think you're a defensive defenseman, aren't you? All right, so this is what we're going to do. Shakir, I'm going to trade you away and you're going to go to the Washington Capitals. I'm going to include a third rounder in this deal. And we're going to pick up Martin Faravari. He's going to play some third pairing minutes for us. A good defensive defenseman. I know we're trading away a defensive defenseman in this deal, but you know what? We need a slight upgrade. We also need the top players on this team to start playing better, plain and simple. So this is what the new look defense is looking like. Kevin Korczynski, Sam Dickinson, Broberg, Jake Wallman, Martin Faravari, Perbix. We should be able to keep the puck out of our own net. And then when it comes to the top six here, I mean, like we should be producing. Not really too sure why we're not. So you know what? Based on how the season started, I guess I'll take this for the San Jose Sharks. We are going to sneak into the playoffs, 11th in the entire league, a 44, 33, and 5 record. But this team should be better than this. I will say though, a majority of the players were better after the trade deadline. You know what? That's what we were looking for. We went on like a seven game heater, won seven in a row. Then we lost like five in a row. And then we won four in a row after that. So this team is incredibly streaky. So hopefully we get streaky at the right time here and we can go on a deeper run. We got ourselves a familiar matchup in the first round. Yet again, we're taking on the Vancouver Canucks. Let's just do the exact same thing we did last season. So we know how to beat the Vancouver Canucks. We've done it before here, but unfortunately we're going to be dropping game number one here. Game two is going to be a big one. I don't want to fall to a 2-0 deficit. A massive offensive game. The boys are going to be picking up seven goals. We won back-to-back -back games. Can we make it three straight games? Maybe take out the Vancouver Canucks in five games yet again. Honestly, I'd be perfectly fine with that. We just got to win this upcoming game. Can we win game five and move on to the second round? Are the San Jose Sharks really that playoff team? We're not really too sure yet. Like maybe the San Jose Sharks are just one of those teams that show up in the big time moments. You just never know. So here we go. San Jose versus Vancouver. Vancouver's picking up three goals in the first period. You know what? I'm just going to let this one simulate. We'll take the L in this one and we'll just move on to game seven. So here we go. We got game seven. This is the big one. Vancouver picking up three goals in the first period. Okay. I don't even think I'm going to jump into this one. Yeah. I'm not going to waste my time here. We lost five, nothing. I'm not scoring five goals in the third period on superstar difficulty. That's just not happening. So we're going to take the L in the first round. We blew a three, one series lead. That's a tough one. I should have just jumped into this game right here. I should have jumped into game five. Now I think this upcoming seasons where the San Jose Sharks really take over. A lot of the young pieces continue to develop. Axel Sedin Pelk is going to jump to the lineup. He's going to help lead the way. We're going to make some changes to the top six because clearly we need some more goal scorers here. We're going to make some big time moves and this team's going to win a Stanley Cup. We're winning a Stanley Cup in the next two years. That's a fact. Mulder, I really want to play you on the top line. You just don't have a good fit there, but maybe we can figure it out. Maybe I will play you on the top line even if you don't have a good fit. We'll make it work. So it was a very quiet draft. This is the best player we're getting. Medium top six potential forward. I don't think he's going to be a superstar player for us, but you know what? You just never know. We had a couple more picks, but nothing notable. So obviously we're not going to bring back any of those awful contracts I gave out. Like Boone Jenner's not coming back. Iofall is not coming back. Evander Kane's not coming back. We have $21 million. Hopefully there's going to be some players actually interested in joining this team. All right, it's official. Everyone hates San Jose. There's not a single player that wants to join this franchise. So I guess we're just going to continue to not bring anyone to this team through free agency. All right, so we got to make some decisions on who's sticking around, who's going to be leaving. Will Smith, obviously, you're going to be sticking around. Why would I ever trade Will Smith? This is actually going to be a pretty solid deal. It's going to be five years at what? 8.5 million? We'll do five years at 8.5 million. That's a great deal for Will Smith. So he's going to be sticking around. Tower Toffoli, we're probably going to trade you away just so we can capitalize on that trade value. Moeller, I definitely want to keep you around because I think you are going to hold a role our top six this season i'm actually not 100 sure but here's 4.2 million for the next four even if you're a bottom six player that's honestly not the end of the world for the amount of cap space we have perbix we're going to trade you away here because axel sadeem pelk is going to jump to the lineup so we're going to try to get an elite sniper daniel sprung no clue how you're an 86 overall but you are jake wallman you're an 86 overall but i only want to do like a three-year deal with you you're wanting four years i don't know if i can do that so we might trade you away axel sadeem pelka i want to do an eight-year deal we're getting this done you're going to be a star defenseman for us i'll give you four million dollars i'll give you 
you well more than what you're actually looking for here what do you want like i'll give you a million and a half more than what you're looking for actually maybe not a million and a half yeah we actually will do that four million dollars for the next eight years access to dean pelica i want to keep you on this team long term so unfortunately will smith's actually saying no to his last offer so now we're gonna have to give him a lot more but honestly i'm perfectly fine with that we're still getting a good deal done 10.75 million for the next five okay so we don't need a defenseman but we want to do a bit of a three-team trade per bix and one of our prospects over to the flames we're going to bring in zane perec and zane perec we're going to flip you over to the buffalo sabers and we're going to be picking up a pretty familiar player so i'll give up the second round pick and i think it's probably going to cost two second rounders no it isn't all right now we're going to head over to the buffalo sabers and you might know this guy right here we actually completed a deal with the buffalo sabers where we trade this man away igor kozlov welcome back to the team so zane perec's going to get traded away here as well as a third round pick i think it's going to cost us a bit more than this of course it is we'll throw in a prospect and that should be enough now if we were to trade somebody away who would i actually be okay with trading daniel sprung i'm not gonna lie i actually wouldn't hate trading you away you don't really fit on this team so i think that deal makes sense so we're taking on card cone to make the contracts work but igor kozlov you are gonna be joining this team we drafted you a handful of years ago but now you're officially gonna play for us now on paper we got ourselves an elite team here like the top nine's looking fantastic even the fourth line's looking pretty good when it comes to the defense that changed a little bit axel sedin pelka you're jumping into the lineup i'm expecting really big things from you i think you're gonna be an absolute star for us but it's gonna take you a couple years to develop you know what we got some time here and then when it comes to goaltending ascroft you're an 86 overall the sounds like sharks were a bit disappointing last season but you know what they're gonna turn it around this season no question about it so we're not quite the trade deadline here but we have to make a trade we gotta do something to fix this team william eklund frank nazar both you guys have been sent over to nashville we're bringing in jared mccann i need some goal scoring on the top line jared i need you to score some goals Kemmel, i know you're a sniper you're an 87 overall i need you to score some goals we're gonna get a second and third rounder as well somebody find the back of the net on the first line it gets wild every line on our team is incredible except the first line nobody can produce now at this point we're just going to kind of pray the team completely turns it around we're simming right to the end of the season we stopped like a week before the trade deadline i need the offense to get going okay it was two weeks before the trade deadline but that's neither here nor there the offense has to start rolling and we just picked up seven goals you'll love to see it now i have no clue how this team has just gotten significantly worse over the years like in year number two we were incredible and we've just gone downhill since then even though our defense is better we're allowing more goals here the offense has taken massive steps back jerry mccann since i acquired you you scored four goals for us you had 30 goals about 50 games into the season then you proceeded over the next 25 games to pick up four goals i think i'm going to trade you away i honestly don't know what i'm gonna do with this team i'm gonna be completely honest i think we just have to bring in a new coach we gotta get an elite sniper let's just try to build the greatest top six imaginable whatever happens on the bottom six happens but let's just build an elite top six so we got to make some difficult decisions here we're going to get the 15th overall pick but what is it going to take for this team to start seeing a lot of success i think we got to rebuild the defense we got to get some more defensive players here we got to rebuild a little bit of everything what an absolute stud to get with the 47th overall pick we just brought in an 80 overall with low leap potential and he's a defensive defenseman this guy might play on the team this upcoming season if he doesn't fit on the team we'll send him back to the ohl but what an absolute steal we just got and it doesn't look like we we're done there because we're going to begin another low leap potential player but this one's going to be a gem like the 80 overall player we got wasn't even a gem that dude's just a beast all right so we're going to go through some big changes here tau to foley's not coming back to the team jake wallman i think i need to keep you on this team now I have to basically give you whatever you're asking for. So let's see if we can do 6.6 .6 million or something for the next three years. We need a defensive defenseman like yourself. We're in a bad spot. Zutterland, we're not going to bring you back to the team. I mean, what are you looking for? 3.2 million. Okay, we can bring you back. We're actually going to do $3 million and then just trade you away because you probably have a decent amount of trade value. So Jake Waldman might have said no to his first deal, but he'll accept this one. It's going to be 7.5 for the next three years. We need a defensive defenseman like him on the team. We actually need a lot on this team. All right, you might think I'm just completely bugging here, but trust me, I know what I'm doing jared mccann over to the national predators we're bringing back frank nazar frank nazar when you went over to nashville you immediately started playing significantly better so what does that mean we just have a terrible coach here so frank nazar you will come back to the team this ended up being a very pointless trade but jared mccann you just didn't work here What's it going to take to get Frank Nazar? Are we really having to give up a second round pick? I think we're going to have to. So here's a second round pick for 2030. Just give me my mans back. I want Frank Nazar back. He's on a great contract. It didn't work out here the first time. It's going to work out here this time though. So I'll throw a fourth rounder into this deal. Frank Nazar is coming back to the team. Let's fire the entire coaching staff. All right, so it's time to throw some absolute bags. We're going to start with Camel. $6 million. If he accepts this deal, that leaves us with $20 million to work with. Some of that money, of course, is going to have to go to Sam Dickinson. It looks like it's going to be 5.5. .5. So 5 
5.5 is going to go to Sam Dickinson. That's still going to leave us with a fair chunk of money. Farivari is the next guy that's going to need a deal here. You know what? We could do something similar. It'll be 5.5 for the next four. Kozlov will be the next guy that needs a deal. We could definitely do something like this. We'll make that 5.5 million for the next five as well. If we can keep these guys on cheap contracts, I mean, why not? Clem Costin, you're probably going to be looking for a fair chunk of money here. Maybe not as much as I thought. Here's 2.5 for the next two. And then we'll finish it off with buys. Today. It'll be $1.6 million for two years. You're a good fourth line player for us. So we're going to make one deal in free agency. That's going to be Morgan Geeky. I'll give him like $5 million for one season. I'll basically guarantee him to come to this team. We have $18 million in spare cap space, so we can make a deal like this if we want to. All right, so there is zero excuses this season. We brought in a different coach. We have some different line fits. We have a lot of offensive players on this team. I just need you guys to score. The defense, you have to play defense this season. Like, I don't know how else to say it. Be good defensively. Like, I really don't think it should be that difficult. And Askarov, keep the puck out of the net. Okay, hold on. We're getting ourselves a backup. Let me run to free agency real quick. 900k for two years. You can be the backup. Okay, so I've come to the conclusion the San Jose Sharks don't know if they're supposed to be a good team or if they're supposed to be a bad team. Because at one point, this team was like 20, 18, and 8. Now we're 35, 21, and 8. This team loses 10 in a row and then they win 10 in a row. Defensively, we're the best team in the entire league. Offensively, we're not very good. And that makes no sense considering we have an offensive oriented coach. Like, I really don't know what we're supposed to do here. So Brini's finally performing as he should. He's got 73 points. I guess we should take a quick look at his trophies if he has any. He won the Calder, so I guess there is that. Kemmel, 58 points, and you're minus one. Veronkov, 55 points. Will Smith, 53. Marchenko, 44, but you're not really scoring. Who's an elite goal scorer right now? So this is what we're going to do. It's going to be Kemmel over to the Leafs. We're going to bring in Matthew Nyes. Right now, Matthew Nyes is absolutely elite. Bro has 29 goals. He's plus 51 right now. We need somebody to play in the top six like him. You know what? Why not get Matthew Nyes himself? I'll throw a second round pick into this deal, and that should be enough for Matthew Nyes. I'm surprised they're saying no to that. Like, Kemmel's got quite a bit of value. I'll include a third round pick, and then that should be enough for Matthew Nyes. Do we have to do a first round pick? We might have to. So I'll give you this first round pick for 2029 on top of Kemmel. They're saying no to that. Do I have to do a first and second rounder? Let's get risky out here. Matthew Nyes, please come to the team. Yeah, like this San Jose Sharks team just annoys me. We go on five game winning streaks, then we lose five in a row. We looked amazing right after the trade deadline. Won like six in a row. Then to finish out the season, we dropped seven in a row and then won three in a row. We just can't be consistent in the slightest. The offense stinks. The defense is amazing. I want this team to start scoring goals. Matthew Nyes, 90 points. That's amazing. You were plus 57, but you weren't plus 57 on this team. What'd you do since joining this team? Four goals, 14 assists, 18 points. You were plus six. I don't know what it is. I really don't. Like, so Breen, you had 31 goals, 90 overall, but you're a playmaker. Like, I just want to know, are you a playmaker? Are you a sniper? Like, what are you? Will Smith, 80 overall. As a playmaker, he's picking up 31 goals. Like, we really don't have a true playmaker on this team. And I feel like that's the one thing that hurts us. Like, Marchenko, as a goal scorer, you picked up 17 goals this season. A massive fall off from what you did last season. The San Jose Sharks are a confusing team, no question about it. And then when it comes to Askarov, 38 wins, 3 shots, a 9-11, and a 277. As long as we continue to look good defensively in the postseason, I'll be okay with this team, because then I know we'll be able to show up. We have the Edmonton Oilers in the first round. This will certainly be a tough task for us. They got McDavid. They got Leon Dreisaitl. I need the big-time performers to perform. So no matter what happens here, more than likely we are going to be jumping into at least one game we're gonna be winning game number one but dropping game number two game number three is gonna be a tough loss for us we have to avoid falling to a 3-1 deficit so this might be the earliest i ever jump in game number four here what's gonna be happening the sharks are picking up two massive goals in the first period we should have this game locked down we have a two goal lead entering the third period new just picking up a goal but it's not enough we've even this series up so if we're not jumping into game number four we might be jumping into game number five here i don't want to be facing elimination san jose has to take control of this series broberg's picking up a goal in the first period we're trailing three to one entering the third period this is going to be a tough comeback to make like San Jose's got to pick up a quick goal here but it doesn't look like they're going to be able to do i think i can make this comeback you know what i'm going to make the wrong decision here we're going to simulate the rest of this game we're going to take the l in this one and we're just going to hope we can bounce back so i'm not too sure if trusting the cpu is going to be the right decision here but we just have to trust the simulation gods that we don't get screwed in this one what's going to happen in the first period we're exchanging goals in the second period we're going to exchange goals again here i need the offense to wake up we have to win this game and will smith's picking up a huge goal we force game seven and then i can jump into game seven for us ryan Pollock's immediately gonna be responding then mcdavid's responding oh man we can't have this happen to us i need the san jose sharks to pick up two fast goals here two quick goals or i'm going to be jumping into this one i gotta jump into it i have to win this game for us and then we have to trust the simulation yeah that's not a good sign like we'll win this game no question about it i will find a way to win this game right here however can the cpu be trusted to win game seven i have no clue but sam dickinson he's trying to 
to skate through everyone and then he's going to pass the puck of our own zone give it to Connor mcdavid great work uh so kozlov it looks like he got a break going to the backhand that's an easy goal for him let the man celebrate here it's a tie game we're going to win this game right here then we're going to trust the cpu i told you i'll win this game for us no question in my mind we're winning this game but can the cpu win us game seven that's the only thing I'm focused on. This game's all tied up. We have a lot of time left. We got 248. We could probably win this without having to go to overtime. Like, let's just feed the big time players. Celebrini, Will Smith, Matthew Nyes, Frank Nazar. He's going to send that towards the front net. Voronkov's got a chance. How did Stuart Skinner make that save? Voronkov had the game on his stick and somehow didn't score. So we played good defense up until this point. 2.9 seconds left. Just tie up the man taking the face off. I don't care if we win this or lose it. Just tie the face off man up here. We're going to be allowing one last shot, but we're going to be blocking it. And I think we drew a penalty. In the final seconds, I think we might have drawn a penalty there. So we could be on the power play. So the San Jose Sharks are starting on the power play. Luckily, we were able to draw a penalty in the final second there. Edmonton messed up. They're giving us an opportunity to win. Now, I'm not going to lie. Worst power play in history and then we're immediately allowing a breakaway bro how does that happen send that out to bro burglar and play something let's get something going here molar i know you got zero wheels whatsoever you might be the slowest player of all time but you somehow got yourself a breakaway send it over to vronkov how are we not capitalizing now i'm not gonna lie edmonton has cooked us in overtime like it has not been close matthew nice we'll see how fast you are you're somewhat fast let's see if we can center that towards the front of the net okay this is ridiculous Stuart skinner's not that good I've watched enough Stuart Skinner to know he is not that good. They're turning the puck over. We're going to the backhand. See, that's the Stuart Skinner I know. Going for the poke check in a terrible situation, making the wrong decision. Marchenko is going to go to the backhand. We're scoring a big time goal there. What was the defense doing? I have no clue. They gave Marchenko so much space, but we're going to bury that one. Now we're off to game seven. CPU do not let us down. So the CPU literally has one job here. Keep the puck out of the net. We were going to score three in the first period. We scored two in the second. There's no way you can blow a 5-0 lead, right? We won this game. So that overtime win means so much now. We're off to the second round. So that was a huge win for the San Jose Sharks. That's showing that we can compete with the best in the league. But now we have a tougher task, the Vancouver Canucks. Or was Edmonton the better team? I actually don't even recall who the better team was. It's the Vancouver Canucks. I mean, they were pretty close in the standings. So we can compete with either of these teams. I don't care what our record during the regular season was. All that matters is how this team plays in the postseason. We have a 2-1 series lead. Can we make it a 3-1 series lead? Like, I've seen the CPU let me down time and time again. However, if we go into overtime this game, I'll jump into it. But nope, we're going to be allowing three goals in the third period. Great work, team. So we're down to a best of three. We got to win game number five here. That's going to be a big one. Hopefully, we can just dominate this game. I'll jump into game six, win it. Then we're off to the conference finals for the first time in this video. We're picking up two goals in the first period. In the second, Morgan Geeky is going to be picking up a huge one. We got this game locked down. A 5-1 victory. That's huge for us. So we're going to be winning 5-1 there. Now, this is a game we have to close out. Three goals in the first period, another two in the second. The offense is flying now. We're off to the conference finals. This is the offense I need during the regular season. Why it doesn't show up, I couldn't tell you. Now, so far in the postseason, we have the second best offense and the fourth best defense. Now, here's the problem. The Dallas Stars have the best offense and the third best defense. So they are technically better than us in every aspect. That's a tough one. But I don't care if the Dallas Stars are better than us in every aspect of the game. We're going to find a way to beat them. We have a 3-0 series lead and we're about to sweep this team. Ain't no way we just swept a team that was better offensively and better defensively than us. But I guess it doesn't matter. We swept the Dallas Stars and now we're off to the Stanley Cup final. Who are we going to take on? I don't know yet. It's either the New York Rangers or the Montreal Canadiens. And it looks like it's going to be the Rangers. The San Jose Sharks taking on the New York Rangers. I think I finally believe in this team. I finally believe in the team we built. Now we just have to capitalize when it matters we have to take out the new york rangers and we gotta do it right now game number one is gonna be huge and we're gonna be winning that one are we about to sweep the rangers as well no way we do back-to-back -back sweeps here mac and celebrini congrats on your first stanley cup we really just did that a team that only won 44 games this season is coming out on top stanley cup champions mac and celebrini you better be taking home the con smythe now i don't think mac celebrini is gonna be taking home that con smythe because will smith was absolutely elite i'm assuming it's will smith he's gonna be taking home the con smythe here his first stanley cup as well bro was incredible but so was Macklin Celebrini eight goals 15 assists 23 points but if we're gonna make you the greatest player of all time you can't be the second best player on your team you gotta step up next postseason I need big things from you Marchenko was great Kevin Korczynski was great Moeller was great here everyone on this team was incredible and then when it comes to Askarov he was pretty solid as well a 16-5 and 0 record one shot a 9-10 to 289 this team's looking to run it back next season they're finally showing a bit of potential and I think we've got some momentum now so after winning a Stanley Cup we're gonna keep winning into the 
draft. In the fourth round, we're getting a low-leap potential sniper. 57 overall, but he's also a gem, so there's a good chance he actually turns into something pretty solid. Burakovsky's off to the Anaheim Ducks. I hate to hear that. Like, Burakovsky, you're an incredible player, and you should play for a team where you're going to be able to compete. Why did I just draft that guy? I did. I have no clue, but we're not going to worry about it. We're late in the draft here. There's not really any great prospects available. Now, this is just unfortunate. Sutherland up to an 89 overall. Who would have expected that? He wants 7.5 million. Obviously, we can't do that. There is no way I could have planned for that. Warren Geeky, we're going to let you walk as well. And with all these young players, of course, we'll sign them to stay on the team. Now, things are about to get difficult. Broberg Union Extension. I am currently paying you 2.7 million. You want 10.7. We have $17 million to work with. Not only do we have to sign Broberg, we also have to sign Korchinski. We also have to sign Vorogkov. Yeah, this is going to be tough for us. So what I think we're going to do here is Kem Korchinski, you're going to get a long-term deal. You don't really want to do a long-term deal right now. Vorogkov, where are you looking for? Three years. Let's get something done with Vorogkov. So Vorogkov's not going to come back to the team. I was offering this man a full no movement. Four years and all I wanted was 6.5. So a million dollars less than what he's getting paid right now. But he doesn't want to accept that. So Vorogkov will be traded. Broberg will be traded. Kevin Korchinski, we will resign you, but at a later date because I want to do a long-term deal. This is certainly not going to be easy for us. Now, I guess I could give these two mediumly potential goaltenders two-year extensions. So both of them are going to return to the team, but now we got to make the big deals. So we're going to start with Froloff from the Calgary Flames. He's a good defensive defenseman. He can fit on all pairings. Broberg, we're going to trade you over there. It's going to be Broberg in a seventh round pick. It's unfortunate we have to lose a guy like Broberg. I really like him. A St. Louis Blues legend. But you know what? That's just what we have to do. So I want to make this deal with the Boston Bruins. Veronkov, I'm going to send you over to Boston. We're going to get a first and second round pick. We are then going to flip these picks over to Anaheim because they have a really good prospect. Like I'm talking about this 85 overall right here. Three years left on his entry level contract. He's an 85 overall, but Bro shoots the puck. Last year with the National Development Program, he took 330 shots and picked up 51 goals. He is a shooter. We need a shooter on this team, so we're going to make this deal. I don't care what else we have to give up. We're getting this deal done. Like, that's the one thing this team's missing right now. True shooters. We need a true shooter on this team. I'll throw a prospect into this deal. They're still saying no that. I'll throw a defensive prospect into this deal. I'll throw a Schmidt into this deal too. I'm perfectly fine with that. I want this shooter right here. Now, they're saying no to that. Now, this might be a bit ridiculous considering I've traded for this man multiple times. But Frank Nazar, where do you really fit on this team? Like, let's be honest. You're not really a second line sniper for us. I don't think you can be an elite first line player for us. You're not really shooting the puck enough here. So Frank Nazar, if I throw you into this deal and we send this over to the Anaheim Ducks. So Frank Nazar, you've now played for four different teams. Hopefully it works out in Anaheim and we don't have to trade for you again. So Jake Wallman, now that we acquired that defensive defenseman from Calgary, we no longer need your services. Thank you for helping us win a Stanley Cup. But you and a second round are being shipped over to the Red Wings. They're saying no to that one, but we're pretty close. So I'll throw in this third round pick for 2030 and I believe that should be enough. We're getting pretty close. We got some decent prospects on this team we can trade away. So who's going to be traded away next? I'll trade away Schmidt. I don't really think he's going to turn into a solid defenseman for us. I'll throw him into this deal. They're saying no. I'll give you another prospect, but that's the most I'm willing to do. So all of this is being sent over to Detroit. We are getting finessed here, but I'm perfectly fine with that. So after a couple competitive seasons, we have some money we can work with. We have $22 million in cap space. So technically, if we want to bring back Zutterland, we could do a one-year deal, but he's going to want more than one year. Now, when it comes to Patrick Kane, hypothetically... Let's just say we did something like this. If I give you like $14 million for one year, would you come join our team? Like, yeah, you might be 40 years old, Patty Kane, but you know what? You're still an 88 overall. I think you fit on this team. So here's $14 million for one season. We'll see what happens. If we can't bring in Patrick Kane, I'll just bring Morgan Geeky back for $2.7 million. But bringing in a guy like Patrick Kane would be massive for us, and hopefully we can pull it off. Like, adding Patrick Kane to our bottom six would be incredible, but he really wanted that two-year deal. Jonathan Marcheseau, let's hope you have one more good year left in you. I don't think you do, though. So we want a Stanley Cup, a majority of the team's sticking around. But the real question is, can we figure it out this season? Can we find the back net? Can we be consistently an elite team? That's the big question mark. We've shown signs of being an elite team, but when push comes to shove, we just fold all the time. How is Qualp still our backup goaltender? Shouldn't it be one of these guys by now? You know what? Both these guys can play in the HL for one more season. Qualp, you be the backup. But eventually, we are going to have a different backup. Mack and Sobrini, you just took home your first Stanley Cup. Unfortunately, you didn't get a con Smythe. That's going to change this season. Hopefully you can get some regular season hardware as well. Now we certainly don't get to see this very often. The San Jose Sharks second in the entire league. A 41-12-10 record. Only one point behind the Toronto Maple Leafs. We have an elite offense here, but one of the best defenses in the entire league. San Jose is here to win multiple Stanley Cups. Macklin Celebrini, of course, you gotta be leading the way for this team. 71 points, 24 goals, 47 helpers, plus 17 on the first line. It looks like bringing in these new
new additions definitely made the difference. And then when it comes to goaltending, Askarov, just keep doing you. So with the team being as good as we are, I don't think we're going to make any trades here. There's no one we can really bring in on one-year deals. Voronkov, I guess we could trade for you. But you know what? Apparently, you don't want to join this team. I don't know why you would say that. Like, we're one of the best teams in the entire league. You played a handful of great years with us, and now you don't want to come back? Disrespectful. I mean, I guess if we wanted to, we could just trade for Frank Nazar for the 19th time in this video. Why not? But no, nah, we're not going to make any moves here. We're going to go win a Stanley Cup, though. So to finish off the season, the San Jose Sharks are going to be the best team. A 53-17-12 and 12 record, 3.62 goals for, and 2.7 allowed. The best defensive team, one of the best offense. And of course, Macklin Celebrini is going to lead the way here. 33 goals, 59 assists, 92 points, and he's going to get a Stanley Cup this season. He's going to take home his con Smythe, and he's going to start to prove he's one of the best young players in the league. Askarov, you're elite this season. If anyone's going to take the con Smythe away from Celebrini, it's going to be Askarov, because that man's locked in. We got the Winnipeg Jets in the first round. Let's make a statement. Now, the only reason I might be slightly concerned is because in the final game of the season, we lost 6 4 to Winnipeg, and not only that, we're going to drop game number one here and game number two. All right, we can't be falling to a 3-1 deficit. We got to jump into game number four here. We can fall to a 3-1 deficit. Picking up two goals in the first period. In the second, we're going to pick up another one here. We should have this game locked down and Ashcroft shut out. But Mack and Celebrini picking up a couple big goals in this one. You'll love to see it. I actually know if he had a couple goals. I know he had one for sure. Don't really recall what happened in the first period. But you know what? We're going to simulate game number five. I think the boys are on a bit of a heater right now. Three straight wins. Game six elimination. That's what I get for trusting the team. So we trusted the team and they let me down. We're moving into game six elimination. Three goals in the first period and another two in the second. Why can you guys do this when I go through SimCast? Like if I go through SimCast, you guys dominate. If I don't use SimCast, you guys lose. Like if you dominate game number seven, I might just have to SimCast every single game. All right, San Jose, you have one job. Beat the Winnipeg Jets here. I don't know how we're not beating the Winnipeg Jets, but it doesn't matter. We have a three goal lead. I'm going to trust this team not to choke. And we actually didn't choke. We're taking the Winnipeg Jets down here. Ascroft, another shutout. In order to win games here, Ascroft needs to be perfect. And unless this man is perfect, we can't win games. So San Jose is off to the second round, a team we have seen many times so far in the postseason, the Vancouver Canucks. It's going to be another great matchup between these two teams. So San Jose, we know what we have to do here. Play great defense in front of Ascroft. We allowed five goals in the game number one and five goals in game number two. Why am I not surprised? So we've played terrible defense so far. Watch the boys lock in here. We're trailing by one goal. We've allowed four so far. We can't fall to a 3-1 deficit. JT Miller's picking up a huge goal. Okay, I'm jumping into this game. We're already trailing by three. We have 17 minutes to score three goals. It's not going to be easy, but we got to win this one. So here we go. We got ourselves a breakaway here. This is going to be a massive goal if we can capitalize. Go into the backhand, but Demko's going to be right there. I think Demko read that the entire way. So here we go. Will Smith's got a step here. If we can send it over to the front of the net, we'll have an easy goal. Bro, ain't no way we're not completing that pass. Sam Dickinson, I need you to cook up something special here. Try to go short side. It's not going to work. The boys can just not catch a break right now. I'm going to send it back to the point. We're going to tee that one up. Great timing, but we still couldn't score. Faravari tee one up here. They're blocking everything. I mean, I probably shouldn't be shooting from 900 feet away. That probably would help. But look at Marchenko keeping the puck in the zone here. We're going to send it over to the defense. Faravari, how about you take a closer shot here? That's going to work out for you. His first of the postseason, we've made a two-goal game. So instead of shooting from 900 feet away, Faravari is going to give us a great opportunity there. He's going to make this a two-goal game. We just have to play good defense and where we immediately doing giving upgrade opportunities so we got four minutes left in this one we got to put the pressure on fast send that over to Kozlov if we could have only completed that pass send it back to the defense Sadin Pelka is going to tee that one up that was a perfectly timed shot from Axel Sadin Pelka but we just can't seem to keep the puck in the offensive zone we might have a chance here Mulder would see what you can do you got yourself a bit of space a great shot towards the net but Demko continues to stand on his head here so we outplayed them like crazy nothing more we could have done here they took some last second shots so they're shots are going to be up a little bit but you know what we outplayed this team like crazy we had amazing opportunity after amazing opportunity i don't know how shots were 11 to 11 we were in their zone for so much of that third period i have no clue how the shots were 11 11 i mean i guess they picked up four shots in the final like 38 seconds so there is that so in reality shots were like 11 7 and i guess we do have to consider they did score two early goals in the third period so in reality when i was playing we outshot them like 11 to 5 we had some great opportunities we just couldn't capitalize that's going to be a tough 
tough loss here in the second round, but the boys will be back. I mean, I guess technically we're not done here. Like we still have a chance. We could make a 3-1 series comeback, but now that we've lost that one, I don't see it happening. I'm not gonna lie. I honestly thought we were eliminated, but I guess not. The boys still have a chance. But we gotta make a huge comeback in the third period. Okay, we do have a chance in this one. We just have to win two more games. If we win this series after I lost game number four for us, that's gonna be a historic performance. So here we go. Game number six are the San Jose Sharks showing up. Celebrini, a big time goal. Cole's lost picking up a goal here. We just need great defense in the third period. And then the third period, the offense keeps on flying. We got game seven. The boys are still alive. So here we go. Game seven, the San Jose Sharks taking on the Vancouver Canucks. No way we're doing this. We really just won that. We made a 3-1 series comeback after I lost game number four for us. I should trust the CPU more, I guess. Now, we certainly shouldn't be here. The conference finals, the San Jose Sharks taking on the Colorado Avalanche. Never would have expected this after I lost game number four, but here we are. So the Colorado Avalanche and San Jose Sharks, honestly, this shouldn't be happening. We were able to win game number three here. You know what? I'm trusting this simulation. We're going to win game four here. Did I say we won game four already? We won game three. Now we won game four. I don't know what I'm talking about, but we've won two straight games here. Can we make it three straight games? The San Jose Sharks are refuse to lose here and we're just going to keep on winning and let's keep on rolling this team doesn't want to stop we have the new york rangers up next we just have to close this out so we've made to the stanley cup final the coach is congratulating us here but it doesn't matter we have to win four more games we're going to drop game number one but we're winning two straight after that you know what game number four might be the game i jump into a commanding 3-1 series lead would be massive for this team we're picking up a goal in the first period of course it's going to be celebrini celebrini really picks up the big time goals we're going to simulate the third period and see what happens here we're going to be dropping that one. We allowed a goal with 56 seconds left. All right, that might be a difference maker. I put a bit too much faith in the team, and now we got a tie series. It's a best of three moving on. We have to win this one right here. Game five is going to be huge. Who's going to come out on top? Lafnir is picking up the first goal. Car McMichael is picking up another goal. The boys are down three to one here. I'm just going to take the L here. We're going to simulate the third period. Celebrini continues to pick up goals. Bro's got a ton of goals for being a playmaker. But we got game six elimination here. So if I am jumping into a game, more than likely it will be this one. But you just never know. Maybe the offense is going to start flying. We might be allowing two straight goals, but we're immediately going to respond. The third period is going to decide this one. And just like that, Moore's picking up a huge goal. Axel Sedin Pelka is picking up one four seconds later. I feel pretty confident simulating the rest of this period. We're just going to hold off for a little bit. Like we're over halfway through the third period. They've got a power play here, but I don't think they're going to capitalize. It must have been a four minute power play. Yeah, we've got this game locked down. Axel Sedin Pelka, another big time goal. We got game seven. Every single time I say I'm going to jump into a game, I never end up jumping into that one. But game seven, there's a very good possibility. But who knows? Maybe the boys are just going to stand on their head. We're picking up two goals in the first period. In the second period, we're picking up another two here. Just in case I have to jump into this one, we're going to simulate a bit of the third. Like, I want to make sure we're going to win this game. And so Ben and Jad, he's going to pick up a massive goal. Can we score a goal in the power play? No, we can't. All right, I'm a bit concerned. We're entering the final five minutes here. Do I jump into this one? We're going to let it simulate here. I think we have this game locked down and it looks like we do the San Jose Sharks going back to back here and Celebrini you're finally getting that con Smythe because you're by far the best player like just look at Celebrini 13 goals 23 assists 36 points bro is an elite playoff performer and he's finally gonna be getting that con Smythe his second Stanley Cup and that's the first con Smythe of many because of course we're completing the three-peat next season ask her off you were incredibly mid but who cares we won and that's all that matters now I don't know why Kevin Korczynski won't sign a deal longer than one year but he only wants one year right now so we're going to continue to hold off for a little bit now we don't have a ton of picks here but we do have this one which is the 160th overall we're getting a lowly potential defenseman and i guess we're not done with lowly potential players yet because we're going to be getting another one here in the sixth round so we're finally going to get a deal done with kevin korchinski you'll love to see it it's going to be a seven-year deal i'm hoping i can save a bit of money though can we do sub 10 million dollars I'm going to offer you like 9.5 million. Of course, I'm willing to do more than that, but we're going to start with 9.5. So hopefully Kevin Korczynski is going to be accepting that deal. I don't think he will be, but hey, that certainly works out for us. So when it comes to players walking away, we're just going to be seeing Morgan Geeky walk here. This AHL potential player, he's going to walk as well. And then when it comes to goaltending, we got two mediumly potential goaltenders in the system. One of them is going to be stepping up next season. So it's a good thing that we have a lot of cap space available because there's a lot of players that need to be signed. Matthew Nyes, we're going to get an incredible deal done with you. So with Matthew Nyes, we're going to be saving a lot of money. It's going to be 6.1 for the next five years. Right now, he's getting paid 9.3 million. So that's $3 million in savings. When it comes to Clem Costin, hopefully that's not going to be too bad. This is going to be a spectacular deal. I'll give you a no movement clause and everything. So Clem Costin at 31 years old, you're an 87 overall, and we're going to lock you down for 2.7 for the next two years. For a third line guy, that's an incredible deal. Bystead, you know what? You've been a really good fourth line guy for us, and I wouldn't mind keeping you on this team. I could give you a no movement clause and do a really cheap deal, but we'll just do two 
3.9 for the next two years. So you're still gonna be sticking around at a really cheap price. For Olaf, I'd love to get an eight year deal done with you. But you know what? It doesn't look like you're looking for that. You wanna get your bag in the future. So we'll just do 6.4 million for the next three. And then Pearson, I have no clue who you are, but you know what? You're up to an AD overall. We'll do a two year contract at 950K. That's a steal for an AD overall. And then to finish off all the big time extensions, Ascroft 5.5 for the next six years. To be our superstar goaltender, this is an elite deal. Also, you have exact star potential now. That's incredibly disrespectful. Like insanely disrespectful. All right, I'm looking for some guys for the bottom six and Brett Howden, why not? 1.8 million for the next two years. That'll bring you to the team. And then we need one more guy for the bottom six. Oh, this is a no brainer. Vladimir Tarasenko, I don't care if you're 38 years old. I'll give you 100K more on what you're looking for. Tarasenko's joined the team for the next two years. What could possibly go wrong? Also, we'll bring in Shilov to potentially be a backup for us. You just never know. So we're running it back with virtually the exact same team. Celebrini is coming off a career year, an amazing Stanley Cup run, one of the greatest of all time. But this team has to step up again. This is the big one. This is for the three, Pete. The team's looking elite here, and I don't think we're going to slow down. Also, how is the AHL looking when it comes to goaltenders? You know what? We're just going to have these guys stick in the AHL for one more year. Shilov, you can be the backup. I know I said that last season, but you know what? Give them another year to develop. Okay, so I got way too confident with the San Jose Sharks. I thought we were just going to absolutely dominate the league. Sixth in the entire league, but the worst part about this, we're taking on Vancouver in the first round. So we're going to have ourselves a tough first round matchup. Offensively, we're still looking good here. Defensively, we're one of the best in the entire league. We just need the big time players to step up once again here. Celebrini, I need a career year from you. The top guys are looking amazing, but Will Smith, Marchenko, Matthew Nyes, what happened with you guys like why are you struggling as much as you are you really shouldn't be looking that bad ask croft you continue to look elite here so i have no questions about you you're gonna hold it down when it matters most but we need the second line to be looking better we can't be disappointed in the first round here the vancouver canucks is gonna be a tough task we all know this so san jose you guys might have struggled to finish out the season but you know that's perfectly fine as long as you step up here we're gonna be exchanging the first two games so it's a best of five moving on here and it looks like we can win game number three here so can we win game number four and take a commanding 3-1 series lead that's not gonna be happening we're down to a best of three so you know what i'm gonna believe in the san jose sharks so you know what i'm gonna believe in the san jose sharks and clearly that was the wrong decision we got shut out all right, game number six, let's see what's gonna happen. Like in game number six, we need the big time performers. We're allowing two goals in the first period. We're gonna allow another goal here in the second period. We might be jumping into this game sooner than we think. Except this time, if we lose the game, then we're gonna be losing the series. Last time I lost the game for us, we didn't lose the series. We ended up winning a Stanley Cup. But this game right here, I have to win no matter what happens. So under no circumstances can we lose this game. Who's out here? We got Will Smith, Marchenko, Matthew Nyes, a line that struggled during the regular season. They're gonna figure it out. So in a game like this, we got to play aggressive. And Matthew Nyes, it looks like he's got a step here. He's going to throw that towards Demko. He's going to get lit up. He's getting the shot off. But it doesn't matter because they're going to be keeping it out of the net. But the boys keep on putting on the pressure. we got the full pressure meter maxed out. Will Smith throwing that towards the net. Marchenko's got the loose puck. He's going to try to backhand it. I don't know why he couldn't get any power on that. But you know what? Vancouver's getting it out. Cole's loft. You need to win this faceoff. we got to get a quick goal here. I don't care what it takes. Somebody step up. We're going to win the faceoff. Cole's loft is going to tee one up. Never mind. It's for Olaf. Cole's loft off roll off it doesn't matter it's a two goal game we're back in this one so we've made this a two goal game you know what we're going to keep putting the pressure on Froloff, off let's see what else you can cook up here he's weaving through everyone you know what Froloff? off i want you to lead the offense from here on out let's see what this man can do apparently he can just skate around everyone but i don't know what just happened we picked up a penalty what are the boys doing kozloff you're picking up an interference penalty what did you even do oh that's what you did oh very interesting yeah i can see the interference penalty right there yeah, that was just a bad decision from Cole's loft. Like, we all saw that interference penalty. What was he doing? Oh, look at Cole's loft just flying through everyone. And who's going to be right there? Celebrini. Cole's loft, honestly, I had no clue what you were doing. But you were just kind of skating through everyone. You know what? I was going to let you vibe here. And you know what? You're making it a one-goal game. Macklin Celebrini is going to find the back of the net. His first goal of the postseason, that's not really a great sign. But Cole's loft just skating through absolutely everyone. He's giving us a chance in this game. We got ourselves a one-goal game, 233 left. Honestly, for the amount of goals we scored here and the amount of chances we've had, it's actually been a really quiet third period. So Will Smith, I need a big face-off win from you. Can you step up in the big-time moments? Yes, you can. Dickinson's going to tee one up. We're going to hit a defenseman in front of the net. We had a chance to get the loose puck, but Will Smith got stuck. I mean, the game's not over. Celebrini, let's we'll see what you can cook up. You're going to throw that towards the front of the net. Demko robbed us. We lost because of a Demko robbery. Unbelievable. Demko single-handedly won them that game. I'm not even mad. Like, I'm not mad in the slightest here. Demko stoned us. 
game seven demco actually it wasn't even game seven i think it was game six i don't even remember what game we're in all i know is demco made such a big save there macklin so brini what an absolute feed to molar but Demko's gonna say no. Like in the final seconds, we thought this was over, but Froloff looking to make in big plays once again here, sending it up to Celbrini. He's gonna get past the defense. Molder is wide open. We're gonna feed him this puck and he has a chance to win it. The game on his stick, Demko is going to bite. He's going to go the forehand. He's got enough space here, but look at Demko. Look at him get that glove back in time. I'm not even mad about that. Moeller couldn't believe it. Just look at him staying on the ice. He couldn't believe that was stopped. How Demko made that save, I have no clue. There was basically no space for him to make that. He had no inch of error and just look at him stretching all the way back. Demko won them that game. I'm not even mad. We outplayed them like crazy, out shooting them 22 to 6, but Demko stood on his head. We lost to an elite goaltender. I can't even be mad. The Vancouver Canucks earned that win. So the Oilers are going to go on to win the Stanley Cup, sweeping the Vancouver Canucks in the second round. Edmonton was looking elite 16 and 4 in the postseason. Ain't no way Stuart Skinner's doing that. I'm making these comments as the Edmonton Oilers are getting absolutely cooked by the Columbus Blue Jackets. That's a tough look, not going to lie. The biggest difference in this postseason, Celebrini just wasn't as dominant, plain and simple. He had six points in six games. He still looked great, but he wasn't that dominant self he was in the last postseason. And when it comes to goaltending, Askarov, you let me down. Then again, we were inches away from going to game seven and we lost because Demko stood on his head. Like, I'm not even mad. Yeah, we lost the three peat and we couldn't accomplish that, but Demko made a huge save. Plain and simple, he won them that game. So we got to pick up some great prospects in the draft and that's exactly what we're going to be getting with the 120th overall pick, a medium elite potential goaltender starting at 60 overall. And it looks like we're going to get another elite potential player in the draft, but this is going to be a low elite two-way defenseman. So the resign phase is going to be pretty quick here. These two guys are walking. That's it. So here's where things are going to get a bit expensive. Roche, Moeller, Carlson, we need to sign all of you guys. It's definitely not going to be easy. We're going to see if we can do it. This is not a great start. We have $19 million to work with. Ray Roche wants 10.6. You know what, Roche? I think you're one of the most important pieces to this team. So we'll do 9.9 .9 million for the next four years. So that'll keep you around. And then Moeller, we got to keep you around as well. But not at 12.9 million. We might be just letting you walk. I mean, we won't let you walk. We'll just qualify you as an RFA. But yeah, that might be a tough one. Jamie Nakus, if we can do 4.9 million, honestly, that won't be that bad of a deal. Eventually, you'll probably jump into the top top six actually what's your fit on the top six you don't actually have the greatest fit in the top six so maybe we'll just write out your contract for the season. And then Matthew Carlson, why not? We'll do this. It's going to be 3.5 for the next two. And then when it comes to our two mediumly potential goaltenders, we can sign both these guys. It's going to be 850K for the next two years. That works out for me. So this is where we're going to do Nakus over to the Dallas Stars. We're going to bring in Haas here. He's probably going to want a 5x5, five five, but honestly, that might not be the end of the world seeing as he fits on all defensive pairings. And right now, Nakus doesn't really fit on the third pairing. So this is going to be a good deal for us after we include a seventh rounder. So we're going to throw a seventh round pick into this deal. Haas is going to be joining the team. That's good move for us so this deal is actually gonna be a bit better than i thought and we're gonna be doing multi-years here it's gonna be five years but it's actually not gonna be a five by five we're probably looking at like 3.8 million or something we'll do 3.8 million for the next five years that's gonna be keeping haas around that's actually an incredible deal all right so we got bringing some guys for the bottom six max domi or at least an 84 overall so this won't be the end of the world it's gonna be 3.9 million for one year we have 12 million dollars in cap space so i'm okay with overpaying and you know what max domi on the bottom six alongside a guy like jake getzel is actually very interesting we'll do three point for i have no clue if jake gets even fits on the bottom six but that would be an interesting pairing so max domi might not be fitting as well on the bottom six as i thought he would but look at this team right here there is no excuses like there is zero excuse on why this team is going to be bad an elite offense an elite defense an elite goaltending nothing could possibly go wrong this season right like nothing could possibly go wrong like we have injuries off there is no way this team disappoints me right incoming disappointment i think we all see it happening so we've made it to the trade deadline we're sitting first in the entire league a 42 14 6 record we started the season two and six i was so incredibly concerned when we started the season two and six but luckily the boys are bouncing back here cell has got seven 71 points so far. Will Smith's got 53. The only concern I have is we don't have an elite goal scorer on the team. We have great goal scoring depth, but we don't have one guy that can really lead the way for us. I mean, I'm not against having a bunch of amazing goal scorers, but I would like one guy to lead the way. And then when it comes to Ascroft's numbers, 28 wins, three shots, an 898 and a 289. That's not good. That's not good in the slightest. Our backup though is looking elite. So you never know, he could be the starter in a couple years.
years. We would have to hold on to him and Ascroft because Ascroft, he does have that no movement clause. And we do have him locked down for another five years after this one. So yeah, I guess Ascroft has to be the guy. I mean, at the end of the day, I'm not against that. Ascroft's looking amazing so far. Do we make a trade here? I don't think we do. I like the team we have right now. There's not really too many trades that could help us. I don't really want to be paying an absolute bag for anyone on a multi-year deal. And we can't really afford anyone on a multi-year deal. So we're just going to stick with the team we have. So plain and simple, the Dallas Stars were just significantly better than us to finish out the season. A 59-18-5 and record. That team was locked in. But we're second in the entire league, so you can't sleep on us. We have a really good offense here. We got an amazing defense, but the team has to step up in the postseason. So Brini, 90 points during the regular season is great, but it doesn't matter if you fold during the postseason. Kozlov, can't fold. Will Smith, can't fold. Roche can't fold. Nobody can fold on this team. Ascroft, I need you to be even better in the postseason. I need every single player on this team to step up. Colorado's not going to be an easy task, and we got them in the first round. So what are the odds that we drop game number one? Okay, we're scoring nine goals in game number one. For some reason, I thought Colorado was going to upset us, but nope, they don't stand a chance. We have a 3-0 series lead. Nine goals in game number one. Definitely set a statement here. Now it's closed out in a sweep. San Jose is legit. So a sweep over the Colorado Avalanche was a great start, but now we have to take on McDavid and Drysaddle. And that's never easy. So we know what McDavid and Drysaw are all about. They're going to step up in the big time games. We're dropping game number one, but we're going to win back to back here. We've played some amazing defense so far in the postseason, and that has to continue. A shutout in game number four. Can we shut them out again in game number five here? We're going to drop that one five to two. We'll see what happens in game six. Like with the way this team's been playing, I don't think we're going to blow a 3 1 series lead. Yeah, we don't have to worry. Four goals in the first period, that's going to be more than enough. We're taking this one four to one. That was a dominant performance. So we all saw this matchup happening. The Dallas Stars taking on the San Jose Sharks. The winner of this matchup is going to win the Stanley Cup. No team's going to be able to stop either of us. So San Jose versus Dallas. This is going to be a great match. We're dropping games one and games three here. So game number four is going to be a big one and I want to take the risk simulating that one. I don't want to fall to a 3-1 deficit so we might be jumping into this one. We're picking up a goal in the first period. Of course it's going to be Salbrini. We have a 2-1 lead right now. Things are looking good but we have to hold on to it. So we're entering the final moments in this one. A 2-1 lead. It looks like we're going to be able to close it out here and that's exactly what we're doing. So the series is all evened up. All right, so I'm stupid and I have my mic muted. We won game number five. I simulated that one. We're off to game number six. Hopefully we can close the series out here. We need to close it out right now. I don't want to go to game seven against the Dallas Stars, but we might be doing that. It's a one goal game entering the third period. I want to make sure we can win this one. Like I'm kind of scared to jump into this one because I can jump in in the final five minutes. And if I don't win this game, we have to trust the simulation in game seven. So you know what? I might not be jumping into this one unless the game's tied. We're trailing by two goals here. We're just going to simulate the rest of this one. We got game seven coming up. So game seven is going to decide this series. Who's going to step up in the big time moments? The San Jose Sharks, the Dallas Stars. We're already trailing by two goals entering the third period. Why am I not surprised? Now, whatever we do, don't allow a goal in the next five minutes here. At least give me the full 10 minutes to cook. And you know what? I think we're going to be getting that. We've reached the 10 minute mark. It's time for me to jump in. So here we go. We might finally have a chance. Now, Matthew Nice has got a break. Go into the back. I hate this game. I honestly hate this game. Yep, I guess when I flick up on the right stick, that's not going to count as a shot. Will Smith take this. I'm just mad right now. We're getting into a fight. Will Smith versus Thomas Harley. Ain't no way we didn't shoot that. Matthew Nyes had a wide open net. Like that was the most wide open net you could have asked for. And somehow you're not going to shoot. I don't know why you didn't shoot. I don't know what happened there. But I flicked up on the stick. I don't think I could have flicked up any harder. Like Matthew Nyes had Jake Ottinger lost when he goes to the backhand here. Look how wide of a net he has. What is this? What is this right here? Buddy, just put this in the open net. What are we doing? You had a wide open net. This should be a one goal game. Carlson, I guess you can pick up a goal for us. There, we're finally going to be scoring. That should have been goaltender interference, but we're not going to worry about it. I basically ran the goaltender over. Jake Getzel's picking up a goal. Who would have thought? Ain't no way Jake Getzel's picking up the big time goals for us. How much time do we have left? I wasn't even paying attention. We have a bit more time though. I know that. So here we go. Celebrini trying to bring the puck in. We're going to send it back to Dickinson. We're not getting robbed again. We're not doing this. Demko robbed us last time and now it's going to be the Otter. A perfect pass from Celebrini. Dickinson's got a perfect opportunity teeing that one up. The Otter just stones us there. 
We cannot catch a break right now. Sam Dickinson, a wide open net. Miro Heiskanen's even blocking Jake Ottinger a little bit. Perfectly timed, but the Otters saying no. I can't believe it. We just can't catch a break right now. We should have scored with Matthew Nyes. We should have scored right there, and we'd be off to the Stanley Cup final, but we cannot find the back of the net. I cannot catch a break right now. First, it's Thatcher Demko robbing me. Then it's Jake Ottinger absolutely robbing me, and Matthew Nyes not shooting the puck when he probably should. We can't catch a break right now. I don't know what it is. Is, but I cannot catch a break. We should have like five Stanley Cups right now. But nope, we cannot win the big time games and Dallas wins the Stanley Cup. That should have been us. But at the end of the day, I don't think the offense was good enough here. Like we just weren't scoring enough goals. Then again, actually we were pretty good. Moller's picking up a handful of goals. Marchenko picked up seven. Will Smith, six. Roach picked up six. Jake Getzel even picked up six. So yeah, we were scoring goals. The goaltending was great here. It was just an unfortunate loss. Jake Ottinger robbed us. So we got to get some players in the draft here. Kaminsky's going to be joining the team. 64 overall, low leap potential. I would have liked this guy though. 75 overall with low leap potential but hey we'll get what we can so i don't think we have enough elite potential goaltenders on this team so we're going to pick up another one here in the second round now the elite potential player is going to continue with the 94th overall pick we're getting d low a medium lead potential sniper his name is actually derek low but you know what this man's d low to me so the medium lead potential goaltenders continue this one with the 126th overall so unfortunately Mulder's not going to come back to the team we're just not going to have the money for him so we're going to qualify him as an rfa and then he'll be traded away max Domi's not going to come back jake Etzel's not going to come back howden's not coming back like we're losing a handful of guys but a lot of them are bottom six pieces now this is where things could become very bad for us or very easy macklin sobrini where are you looking for when it comes to a deal you got to do multiple years for me we can't do eight years at 19 million so you know what we're gonna have to hold off on that deal eventually we are gonna be re-sign you but we just can't right now will smith where are you gonna be looking for now this is why this deal is gonna be very easy we're gonna get this down to nine million dollars with a no movement clause so will smith will stick around 9.6 million for the next seven years a full no movement we're actually gonna be saving a bit of money with his deal sam dick Dickinson. Unfortunately, I probably can't say the same for you. You only want one year, so we're going to have to hold off a little bit. Martin Fervari, I think we're going to trade you away. Marchenko, what can we do with you? Like, you're looking for 10.3 million. I think we're going to have to route your contract and just let you walk. This is going to be a really tough off season for us. We're going to have to make some big moves. All right, so by instead, I can't afford to bring you back to the team next season. So Yurkimovs, you're going to come to the team. I'm going to get you in a second round pick from the Toronto Maple Leafs. Yurkimovs, I'm really hoping we can sign you to an incredible deal. So Yurkimovs is going to be signed to an incredible deal. We're going to do 2.9 for the next next five and no movement clause in the final four years that's a great deal he's only 24 years old so he's gonna keep on getting better pearson you're gonna be a good bomb six piece for us as well so hopefully we can do a long-term deal with you as well where are you gonna be looking for we could do this so pearson you're gonna stay with the team as well it's gonna be 2.9 for the next five years for a bottom six player that's gonna be a really good contract our fourth line really is gonna cost us too much and that's where we're gonna be saving a lot of money so here's a fourth rounder as well all of these draft picks on top of martin ferivari LA's finessing us. So we just need ourselves a cheap defenseman. Drava Chevik, you're going to be that guy. It's 2.6 for two years. So Buffalo, we're doing a three-team trade with you. You're going to give me your first, second, and third round pick. I'm giving you Moeller. They're going to be accepting that. We're heading back over to Anaheim. We're getting Thalberger. Okay, so there's a medium lead potential player here available in free agency. So we're just going to sign him to the team. I'll definitely take it. There's actually a lot of mediumly potential players here available in free agency. Like I'm not talking RFAs, just free agents. So yeah, I'm going to sign all of these guys and trade them away. Now after signing this mediumly potential in free agency, we're going to trade him along with that first rounder over to the Anaheim Ducks. Thalberger, welcome to the team. I don't know how much more it's going to cost, but you know what? We're going to get this deal done. So I'll give you Buffalo's first rounder, Buffalo's second rounder, and a mediumly potential defenseman. Now we finessed Anaheim. We literally just trade you a free agent. So we need a fourth line center right now. So fifth. That's a second and third round is going to be traded over to Seattle. We're bringing in Calder. I just need him to play fourth line minutes for us. Nothing crazy. Now look at this absolute unit of a team right here. And you know what the crazy thing is? This team is somehow not going to win the Stanley Cup. This team right here won't win the Stanley Cup. We'll probably get knocked out in the first round if anything. Macklin Celebrini, you certainly haven't had the career I thought you would have at this point. But you know what? Things are about to start changing. Not one Stanley Cup. Not two. Not three. We got to win seven more Stanley Cups. Am I setting expectations a little too high? Absolutely. But it doesn't matter. So I also need you to sign a contract with this team. Sam Dickinson, I also need you to sign a contract with this team, but it has to be more than one year. So it looks like we're finally getting a deal done with Mac and Celebrini. 11.3 million for the next eight years, a full no movement clause. Celebrini, welcome back to the team. But we're not quite done there because Sam Dickinson, I also want to bring you back and we're going to be doing that. So Sam Dickinson, this is what your deal is going to look like. 10.5 million for the next seven. You're getting a no movement clause as well. The important players are sticking around. So moments like this are when I lose faith in the San Jose Sharks. Second in the entire 
entire league with 62 wins. We won 62 games and got second in the entire league. Ain't no way that just happened. How does that even happen? How do you win 62 games and finish second in the entire league? That doesn't make sense to me. So Brini, 101 points, a career year from you. Roche, you were looking amazing as well, picking up 89. The entire team looked great. Axel Sadim Pelka, what a great pickup that turned out to be. And then when it comes to goaltending, Ascroft, you were incredible. But none of this matters. And why does none of this matter? Because more than likely, we're going to see the Dallas Stars in the conference finals, and we're going to somehow fall again. No more disappointing, no more failures, win Stanley Cups. That's what we're here to do. Now it's time to do something that we're yet to do in this video, and that's simulate the first four games. That's how confident I'm feeling. I believe we can simulate four games here and win all four. We drop game number two. Okay, this team's going to just let me down all the time. You better not lose game number four. We have a 3-1 series lead, close out in game number five, and then we're just going to keep on simulating. We're going to have some momentum here. Just close out in game five. Our defense has not been good. Our defense hasn't been that great so far, so that's a bit of a concern for me. So we moved on to the second round. We have the Vancouver Canucks up next. Vancouver, of course, is going to be a tougher task, but the defense has to be better. Our defense was the best in the entire league, but now it's faltering. We drop game number one. We drop game number two. What are we doing? What are we really doing here? So you already know what we got to do. We're going to jump into game four and then somehow Thatcher Demko is going to rob us once again. We're exchanging goals in the first period. In the second, we're picking up another three. This game's over. We're winning at five to two. The series is all evened up. I don't want to jump into a game against Thatcher Demko because I know for a fact if we do, we'll somehow lose. So San Jose, it's a best of three. So you know what that means. We have to win this game right here. And that's what we're going to be doing. I also just noticed Thatcher Demko is actually not the goaltender. So we should be all right now. Yeah, we're scoring goals like crazy. So here we go. Game number six. This is the big one. Without Thatcher, Demko, the Vancouver Canucks are frauds here. We're picking up another four goals, and now it's time for the rematch. The matchup we've all been looking for, the Dallas Stars taking on the San Jose Sharks. So whatever happens here, don't lose the first three games. We actually won two in a row. This team really won two games in a row. All right, I might jump into game number four here because a 3-1 series lead would be huge for us. Okay, never mind. I am not jumping into this game. We got smoked. It's a best of three moving on. So we have a best of three moving on here. We can't lose game number five. Whatever you guys do, don't lose game number five. A goal in the first period, two allowed in the second. You know what? I'm trusting the simulation here, and that was clearly the wrong decision. Nothing's going right for me today. Now, I guarantee now that we lost that game two to one, I'm going to try to jump into game number six and we're going to be losing by five goals in the third period. I am calling it right now. What happens in the first period? We're allowing two goals. In the second, we actually have a tie game. So this is still winnable for us. But of course, we have to allow a goal. Never mind, we're going to respond seconds later. I'm okay with allowing that goal now. Now, ideally, we win this game without having me jump in because I don't really want to jump into this game because we'll somehow lose it. That's a huge goal right here. We have to hold it down for the next eight minutes. We've entered the final five. Great defense is all I ask. Hold it down and allow us to win this game. And it looks like we're going to be winning this one. We got game seven elimination. San Jose, you have to win one game. One game puts us... I can't with this team. I really can't. We got the third period. Let's see if I can score three goals. You allowed four in the first period. What's wrong with this team? Now, this is the gameplay you get. Our coach walking around incredibly depressed. And why is he depressed? Might have allowed a goal. Yeah, Jason Robertson just scored on us. We're trailing by four goals. Yeah. Ain't no way. Ashcroft, have you heard of making a save? Like, buddy, I'm sorry. Also, why is every single time Sam Dickinson's on the ice, he is exhausted? I swear, bro plays a four-second shift, and he's just automatically exhausted. But yeah, I'm sorry. Ashcroft, you gotta make a stop once in a while. Like, you gotta stop letting this team down. Like, honestly, I think that's more impressive than scoring a goal. Somehow getting the puck through traffic, we're gonna send it back. Axel Sadin Pelica. Okay, to be fair, there's no way you didn't avoid that, man. But you know what? You might finally have a goal here. A nice little pass over to Carlson. That was an easy one for us. We finally scored on Jake Ottinger. Honestly, that's a win in my books. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. We gotta talk about something. I've had a million opportunities in this game, and I have never scored any of these amazing opportunities. But Kevin Korczynski from the point is going to score this one right here. There is no reason Kevin Korczynski should score that goal right there. Jake Ottinger was literally there. It was only 81 miles per hour. Look at where the otter is when I take this shot. He is in position for this. He should make that save. Yet he doesn't. So you're telling me when the otter is fully out of position, doesn't have a chance to make the save, he'll fling his stick in the way and somehow block it. But he won't make that save on Kevin Korczynski. And then of course the defense is absolutely exhausted and Miro Heiskanen just blows right by everyone. What is the speed of all these guys on my team? I'm not even playing the final seconds. I need to know our defense's speed because Sam Dickinson, you might be the slowest player of all time. I will take a 55 year old Phil Kessel over you. 
Like, they won the face-off, Miro Heiskanen got the puck, and skated through everyone. Like, literally just went right down the middle, and somehow he was quick enough to get past both of our defensemen. I need to know everyone's speed here. Axel Sedin Pelka, 88 speed. Sam Dickinson, 87. It is not 87, it is like 60. Bro, you are so incredibly slow. Kevin Korczynski, you got 90 speed. Frolov, you have 86. We have to work on this team's speed, because man, are we slow. Like, Sam Dickinson, I don't know how you are that slow. You are 26 years old. It's not like you're 45 or anything. If you're 45 years old, I might get it. But you're young. You haven't been injured. Why are you so incredibly slow? Why are you getting blown by? We're losing again to the Dallas Stars. The Dallas Stars are going to win the Stanley Cup here. Okay, it was the New York Rangers, but that doesn't matter. This team just always lets me down. Me acting like I didn't jump into that game when we were losing by three and then ended up losing by four. Nope, I'm going to play victim here and I'm going to blame the CPU, even though I allowed more goals than I scored. We just won't talk about it. I mean, at least we got a 71 overall with medium top six, but I'm not even that happy about that. We're also going to begin a gem in the second round, but you know what? Gems don't win a Stanley Cups. Big time players do, and clearly we don't have those. All right, so we got $11 million to work with. Calder, this is actually a really good deal. We're going to do three years at $1.8 million. I'm perfectly fine with that. And then Clem Costin, we actually might be able to afford you, or do we keep Marchenko instead? Marchenko wants $10.6 million. That's not going to happen. Clem Costin, you're 34 years old, so I don't necessarily want to bring you back here. But at 3.9, it actually might not be the end of the world. Clem Costin, you will continue to play for this team. We'll do $3.7 million for one year. All right, Froloff, you are one of the very few people I actually trust on this team, but you only want a one-year deal. What is with everyone only wanting one-year deals? Kozlov, you're willing to do a seven-year deal, but you are a third-line guy for us. I think I might just trade you away. Carlson, you turned to a first-line player for us, but you're only looking for three years here. Honestly, I don't really care. Let's just keep you on this team. So here's $7.4 million for the next three years. He's going to be sticking around. Clem Costin, you're going to leave next season. Kozlov, Froloff, not really too sure what I'm going to do with both of you guys. All right, so this is what we're doing. Kozlov, Voros, you're both going to be traded away. Voros is looking for $6 million next season. I'm not giving him that. So yeah, we're picking up a medium lead potential player, a good prospect, and a first round pick in this deal. I'll give you a second round pick in order to get your first. Now, if you say no to this deal, take the first rounder out and you have to give me second round picks. That's what we're doing. So instead of a first rounder, how about you give me two seconds and we call this a fair deal? How about you give me one second? How about you just accept this deal? So I really don't know what it is anymore. Is it the terrible gameplay? Is it the fact that players can't step up in the big time moments? Is it Ascroft just being absolutely terrible? Who knows? But we can't win Stanley Cups here. No matter what we do, we can't win Stanley Cups. So with that being said, let's simulate the entire season and not stop at the trade deadline because why would we need to pick anyone up? What could possibly go wrong this season? Definitely aren't going to match up against the Dallas Stars once again in the post season and somehow lose to them in seven games that won't happen now this is a big season for us and the reason i say that barring how frustrated and mad i get with this team it could potentially be the final season macklin so i'm supposed to try to give you the greatest career possible you are turning 28 years old next season things have not gone well for us the top six incredible here the defense really good as Croft, i guess you've been good enough i don't really know what to say about you we play the vancouver canucks in the first round vancouver is known to beat us we'll probably see edmonton in the second round not really ideal and then dallas of the conference finals if we can make it that far so we're going to start this postseason off against the vancouver canucks where are the odds we lose game number one okay we actually won two games in a row here that doesn't happen very often we've won three games in a row okay we're going to blow a 3-0 series lead aren't we yep we lost game number four we're going to drop game number five if we drop game number five i'm going to lose my mind here this team sucks i hate this team so incredibly much why are we doing this i don't even care that we won this series why did we have a 3-0 series lead only to immediately lose two games after that watch us get absolutely smoked by the Edmonton Oilers now. Ain't no way this is happening. I know Edmonton's one of the best teams in the entire league, but even still. So, Brini, it's all on the line right here. We're picking up four goals. We're picking up six goals. We've won this game. Okay, we scored eight goals in this game. Now, if we get shut out in the next game, I'm going to lose my mind even more. Like, this team is something special. Like, it's actually amazing on how disappointing we are. Like, if it's not the Edmonton Oilers, it's the Dallas Stars. We're always losing somehow. It's a one-goal game entering the third period. I can't trust the CPU. I really can't. Then again, I can't trust myself whatsoever because I'm going to jump into this game and we're going to get absolutely smoked. We're probably going to allow a goal in the next 30 seconds or something. Maybe not. It looks like we're off to the final five minutes, trailing by one goal here. This team is just something special. I don't know what it is. Like, we constantly finish top three in the entire league, and then when the postseason comes around, we're a bottom three team, no question about it. Like, you have to be a pretty spectacular team to constantly finish top three, and then when the postseason comes around, be bottom three. Like, it's actually impressive. Okay, here we go. Kevin Korczynski, turn on the Jets here. Let's just see if you have some ridiculous speed, and you can blow by the goaltender. Okay, yeah, I guess we blew by the goaltender. I was going to say blow by the goaltender. That doesn't even make sense. Blow by the defense. I'm yapping here, but Kevin Korczynski turned on the Jets. 
I'm making no sense right now. We scored with nine seconds left in the game, though. Yeah, I don't know why. I was going to say blow by the goaltender, but that literally makes absolutely no sense. How are we going to blow by the goaltender? Blow by the defense? Doesn't matter. 9.8 seconds left, or at least off to overtime. Okay, so that's just absolutely fantastic. Of course, the camera's going to die. Let's just keep blowing by goaltenders, though. I know that statement made absolutely no sense, but you know what? We're going to vibe. So Will Smith, blow by a goalie. If it works, we're going to... Okay, yeah, no, this is stupid. This is stupid. I don't know why it's working now, but yeah, we're scoring goals. I don't know why I'm frustrated. Like, I'm actually just genuinely frustrated that we won a game here. I don't know what it is, but this team... Oh man, I don't know what it is. Now we've won back-to-back -back games here. What are the odds in game six we get absolutely smoked? Like man, I have just lost all faith in this team. I don't know what it is. Edmonton scoring in the first period. They're going to pick up another two, but we're going to pick up two of our own. In the third period, we're going to get blown out six to two. This is why I never have faith in this team. I am giving you one more season. This career sim might get cut short. San Jose, you get one more year. If we don't win a Stanley Cup, I'm ending it early. So Brini, I can't simulate your career if you don't win games like i don't know what it is like the goal was to give Celbrini the greatest career of all time yet we can't even make it out of the conference finals this season we didn't even make it to the conference finals who cares what the scoring on this team looked like we got to win a stanley cup all right for Olaf, i mean this works for me you're looking for 13.9 million we're gonna get you for 6.9 million just because of that no movement clause you're looking to cut your salary in half wow a low lead potential player who's a 66 overall i couldn't care less harnstrom we're gonna bring you back it's gonna be a pretty reasonable deal six one for four years rasmussen i have no clue if you fit on this team but here's 7.3 million i don't know why you're not interested in accepting that deal but you know what who cares rasmussen you will join this team and then we're going to try to win a stanley cup i really have lost all faith in this team so this might be the final season we just never know what's going to happen macklin Brini, i am here to give you the greatest career of all time and so far you've won two stanley cups we haven't seen a stanley cup in a long time a con smythe and the calder we are now in the year 2034 it has been far too long since this team has won a stanley cup we went back to back unfortunately we lost in the three peak because Thatcher Demko robbed us. But yeah, ever since then, this team has not caught a single break. We should be a good team. We should have five Stanley Cups right now, but we just can't win. Every single season, I have the same conversation with our coach. And every single time, you know what this man says? Oh yeah, we're going to compete for a Stanley Cup. We got to be one of the Stanley Cup favorites. And every single time, we don't even make it out of the conference finals. Eventually, you just have to accept defeat. So you know what? I don't even want to look at this team's record. I don't want to look at the scoring of this team. Postseason is literally all that matters. We'll look at the scoring afterwards. But we have to focus on this. We're going to be winning game number one against the LA Kings. We're winning game two. Let's keep on rolling here. We got to win game number three. Yes, we can. And we won game four. That's not enough, though. We have to keep on winning. We already know who we're going to match up against in the second round. It's going to be the Edmonton Oilers. This is where things are going to get real. We have to beat the Edmonton Oilers here. The San Jose Sharks just swept the LA Kings. We can compete with the best right now. And that's exactly what we're doing. A 3-0 series lead. Close it out in game number four. And we're off to the conference finals. And we all know who we're matching up against. A team that has upset us multiple times in this video. A team I am sick and tired of. The Dallas Stars. Now Dallas, we are 8-0 right now. You are not going to beat us. We want two of the first three that's huge for us we're moving on to game number four in game number four we're going to drop that one we can't do this we are 10 and 2 right now we have to win two of the next three i don't care which two it is but we have to win two of the next three we're allowing two goals in the first period miro heiskin is scoring you know what with the way i've been playing i don't really trust myself we're just going to simulate a little bit of this game we're going to simulate the rest of this game we have to win the next two games what are we doing so we need to win this game right here we have to win this game to force game seven this is why i give up with this team this is the exact reason why i give up with this team three goals we're jumping in already why can't we win i don't get it i really just don't understand it anymore i really don't 18 minutes left to score three goals the dallas stars have jake andre in between the pipes so we already know what's going to happen here we're not going to complete passes. That's what's going to happen. Why can we just not complete a pass here? No, oh, like real talk, the Dallas Stars are really going to be the end of me. I don't know what it is. I don't know why we can't complete passes. I don't know why we can't do anything here. So here we go, Thalberg. You've got to step on the defense. I think we have to drop this one back. Roche can't finish it. I just don't get it anymore. That's the goal we're scoring. You're telling me that's the goal we're scoring here. I don't think I've scored a nice goal in this entire video. I'm pretty sure every single goal I've scored has just been some atrocious goal that somehow finds the back of the net. You're telling me that's the goal we score, but Jake Andre's poking the puck away earlier? 
It just isn't right. Like, watch Sam Dickinson somehow score here. This man is somehow going to find a way to find the back of the net, and it's going to make absolutely no sense. We're going to send it around. We're going to send it over to Korczynski. He's going to tee one up. Of course, it's going to be blocked. He's going to get another opportunity, though. He's going to thread the needle between six people. But you know what? We still can't get it on net. Like, watch us score some other stupid goal right here. Like, he's going to go... No, I'm done. Nope. You're kidding me. You are kidding me. I was talking about scoring a stupid goal here, and you know what? That almost was a stupid goal, because there is no angle right here, but yet, we are going to ring this off the crossbar. I got nothing else to say. Macklin Salbrini, the goal was to give you the greatest career of all time, and you know what we gave you? Probably eight or nine conference finals exits. Like, I actually have nothing else to say about that. You had eight or nine conference finals exits. Matthew Nice, can you catch up to the play here? Can you do something? No, I'm over. I'm done with this. Thank you for watching the video. This was something special. I honestly don't know what to say. Like, we're not even finishing the career of Macklin Celebrini. I can't play this anymore. I cannot sit here and play this game anymore right now. I need a break. We cannot find the back of the net to save our lives. It just doesn't make sense.